Hello everyone, my name is Sick and welcome to State of Decay 2. We are playing the Juggernaut Edition and we are actually playing a beta. Now this game has released ages and ages ago, but across the years they have updated it quite a few times and currently we are in the beta test for update 32 which apparently is and well yeah I, I played this game when it first came out and this is the biggest update that has released for it since the up uh, since its first release actually it has a humongous update to how the enemy ai aka the zombies behave on the world map and this is something that is entirely new but um Basically, there is a dynamic spread of plague zombies across the map. So, um, when the game first released, you had plague hearts. Usually, every map had about 10 of them, and the plague hearts created plague zombies around them. And the plague zombies could give you diseases, specifically blood plague. And, you know, it was just like an additional thing to be concerned about. But it didn't really spread, it had just like, uh, you would encounter it sometimes and it would definitely be around the plague hearts. But that was about it, it was a bit random. With this update, the blood or the plague hearts actually send out patrols, kind of like um, zombie hordes, which will invest buildings. And those buildings, when leveled up, will actually send out waves to attack your base now they don't do that immediately they have to kind of wake up by you being in their vicinity and being spotted by zombies and apparently particularly in particular the freaks when they see you and are aware of you they will kind of inform the plague heart and over time a plague heart will wake up at which point it's going to consistently start sending out hordes and conquer the map and yeah things can get out of control now I want to start a new game here. We will be playing a regular campaign with a new community. We will skip the tutorial for this and we will be playing on Dread difficulty. Uh, I already completed two standard campaigns, uh, which apparently is a fair challenge. Not everyone will survive. And to be fair, yes, I did lose a couple of people sometimes while playing this, but overall I feel it's pretty easy Though I am not ready for Nightmare and Lethal, we will just be playing on Dread difficulty. Which is a more intense threat to our survival with deadlier zombies, larger hordes and scarcer resources. And we will accept this and we can actually de deploy into different maps. So we have Meager Valley, we have Drucker County, we have Random. We have Trumbull Valley, which is actually the map of the original game. Uh, we have Providence Ridge and Cascade Hills. Now, I think I have played Cascade Hills before. And when looking at this map, I am not entirely sure. The home sites actually, no, they don't look familiar. Meager County. I haven't played this one, Drucker County. I think I've played this one, Fogel House, yes. I've definitely played Drucker County. So I want to play something different. Now, Trumbull Valley is the map of the original game. Uh, it can be quite fun, but let's go with something else. Providence Ridge with the mountains. Could be cool. It only has a couple of home sites though. And Cascade Hills has a few more and it has a bit of a bigger map from more what it looks like uh, but let's see landmark outpost new hope church has many uses for a growing community landmark outpost leads concrete silo negates your materials upkeep cost this could be quite useful actually so let's go with cascade hills because in this game we actually control a base we can upgrade slots in this base to hold specific uh, building so we can make beds we can make a medical station we can make a fighting station where we improve our fighting capabilities and so on some of the more advanced ones require material upkeep 
over time. And with the landmark outposts on this map, we can basically negate our material upkeep. So we can build a lot of stuff. So we will accept this and then move on. All right. So we get to pick three survivors with which to start. We can pick this. And we have a couple of people here that have survived from my older outpost. So you can see a lot of these people have quite a lot of good skills. Uh, the yellow ones are better than the gray or white ones. Clearly we have uh, Richard here, for example, has cardio. You can see the stars on the cardio. They're all black, so they're not filled in. So he has a cardio skill, but he's not particularly great at it yet. Uh, his wits, he has wits, but he's not particularly great. He's, uh, you know, a beginner fighter, beginner shooter, but he has the special ability of fishing. Now, these are all randomly uh, generated. So these come from my legacy survivor pool. I don't want to do that. So uh, I will do a random character, another random character, and another random character. And we can uh, remove these if we want. Because they all come with uh, random traits, random skills. So we have a character here who is a DIY remodeler, um, which affects our skills. And we have a craftsmanship skill, which is useful. They fear needles, which means they have a minus 20 to their maximum health. That's quite interesting. They do have a chef's knife as a close combat weapon and a carpenter's hatchet as a regular melee weapon and actually a large backpack, which is really good and bandages and snacks. This one is actually pretty decent. The other one has chemistry. Chemistry uh, improves at workshops, infirmaries and stills or by blowing things up. We have a blade collector which will improve our fighting, I guess, and made science videos, which might affect our chemistry. Also a eight size backpack, which is the biggest in the game, a chef's knife and a pipe, as well as some bandages. They would have a warlord leader trait if we select them. This guy would have a builder trait. This would have a warlord trait as well. We are going to get rid of this one, however, because they don't have a specific skill. So, uh, we'll remove this character and we will create another random. We have gardening over here. That is actually good. Connie, Constance S.W. Pritchard over here is a stamp collector. She talks to plants and she is a former Shodan, but she has some pretty good wits, which allows us to get more resources when scavenging the world. She is a beginner novice at fighting, but she has gardening. So we have craftsmanship for building chemistry, for making chemical things like medicines and so on, which is pretty good. Uh, she would also be a builder uh, leader if we select her as a leader. But she has gardening, which allows us to grow more food and upgrade our farm. So that is actually quite decent. So we will select these guys and we will not have any benefits to this community whatsoever by importing original characters that already leveled up all of their skills because that makes things easier. And I want to just start from zero. We could also generally, uh, if we import some of these characters, I think, or maybe even now we will get the choice to uh, get a benefit to our outpost by selecting like an alliance with outposts that I played in the past, which managed to survive all the way to the end. And as a result, can be selected for a bonus. But I'm not doing that today. And we're empty, again. So, whose turn is it to find more fuel? Not me. Last time I almost got ripped apart by a feral. I have a better idea. We can settle down here instead of moving on. I admit, it looks better than the last couple of towns we came through. Now that you mention it, it does feel kind of homey. It's settled. This town is where we'll set up our new base. We just have to find a spot that's defensible. Maybe with some room to expand.
All right, so this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone because this game has been out for quite some time, but this game is very, very systems driven. Um, this is a generic intro with characters that we selected. It will happen all the time with, with different looks to different characters because, you know, they're kind of randomly generated. There is not much of a story beyond that which is randomly generated as well. Like I said, most of these guys, they have a background. So, for example, this guy fears needles. He might comment throughout the game on his fear of needles. Um, but now that we started the game, we only have the two characters. They're busy right now, so I cannot actually uh, ask them to join me. I need to find a new home for our survivors, for our community group. We don't have a base right now that we can expand or do anything with. So we just need to find a local new home, which actually apparently is very close. The Just to Know House is close and affordable. Now we have a bigger map to play on. And throughout this map, you will see these icons right here, which are the Plague Hearts. Now you can see the Zs over here, the Zs. That means this plague heart is sleeping. It is not currently aware of us. It will not send out hordes to infest buildings around it. Uh, none of these are actually awake. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 of these plague hearts, which actually is quite a lot. And we don't have a lot of buildings on this side either, which means probably we need to be quite aggressive and take out some plague hearts quickly to get more uh, groups all right uh, we do have some other potential home sites but we need to have more people as well as influence to claim these you can see here on the top left we need 1500 influence we have zero and we need six people of which we only have three uh, this one comes for free so that is basically our starter area now we have a vehicle here which we could use except we don't have any fuel so we cannot actually ride it. We could find some fuel in the future and refuel this car. Yeah. Just keep your eyes open. Gotta watch the noise. Alright, that is not great. This door was locked. Now I can bash it open, but it is going to create quite some noise. And that is attracting some zombies right off the bat. Ooh, but we find some medical supplies, which is actually quite great. It's a good start. No, we only attracted the one zombie, so we will uh, take care of that and then move on. I'll check out this other side of the house because we actually need to explore three areas to declare this free of zombie yeah, infestation. Got a bad feeling about this. And we have four containers that we can search. So four containers that actually hold supplies or weapons or ammo or a variety of other useful things for us. Now. I think, actually, we cannot reach this other side. We would need to climb the roof to actually clear this building. When we do, I'm not going to do it right now because there's not much use, but if we did, it would create kind of a safe zone around this building that is temporary. So it doesn't help us forever, but it is going to help us for a little while anyway. Now, we do have some zombies here. We can safely ignore them. The red zombies are plague zombies. If they hit us, they will start infecting us with the blood plague. So we want to prevent that as much as possible. But throughout the game, we will encounter quite a few of them, especially around the plague hearts. Now, killing them might resolve or result in them dropping plague samples. And plague samples eventually can be turned into plague, a blood plague um, medicines. So we can actually cure the blood plague that is affecting us. And actually, this looks like a pretty decent home. It's quite big. Has a few of the, uh, quite a lot of um, yard around it. So I think we could build a decent amount of. Uh, slots out here into farms fighting things workshops and so on but we'll have a look so now let me try to sneakily kill as many zombies around here as possible this is of course going to increase our skills 
now I triggered that zombie because she saw our characters because we were so close. We're a little bit dumb, but there you can see my wit skill has increased because I was smart enough to kill these zombies silently and stealthily. Anyway. Proceeding as planned. Come on, really? Alright, we're going to just jump over the fence here, which is also an option. Doesn't make any noise. I think this is an alive zombie. It looks like a, a sleeping state. Yep. So we'll silently kill it. Now we need to clear out this building and its an, uh, surroundings. Basically everything within the walls. To claim it safely. So we need to... Clear out every single room, or at least, you know, make sure that there's no zombie there. We have a couple of rooms on the upper floor, which we need to check as soon as that is done. And there are still zombies left. They are pointed out to us, so we can now move on to that zombie over here and try to kill it. I'd say, actually, ooh, this is a zombie without a leg. So we can just very easily kill it. And with that, our outpost is secure, and we can claim it as a base. My uh, friends here will stop following me and just hang out at the base unless I ask them to follow me. But let's just claim this home site. Our first priority has to be gathering materials. We'll need them to improve this place. We need some eyes out there. You up for it? All right. So. We have a home now. We can see in the top left we have some resources. We have six food, two medicines, zero ammunition, three materials to build and zero fuel. We have three people, no... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't quite remember. But they're basically uh, a resource that we can use to build things. We have influence, 200 of that and 4,000 of something else which i don't quite remember what it is it's been a little while uh, but we have an objective here we need to get some materials we have an optional objective of using the survey point to scout out our surrounding area which will basically tell us what all of these buildings are so that we can search for resources more specifically and we have our base overview. We have some trash here, which we can clear out. We have a master bedroom, which we need to repair. It takes two people, two and a half minutes to do. So we will start with that. Uh, because a master bedroom actually will have an improvement to our morale. Our morale right here is stable, but negative. Because we are have jaded survivors, which is a dread community difficulty level. We start at a negative of minus 11, which is not great. Hopefully the master bedroom will offset that a little bit. We do also have a double bunk room, which provides four beds. So we already have more than enough for finding other people and having them join our community. We will tr clear this. We will. We can also actually build in these empty slots. We also have storage, which we could upgrade if we had eight materials and two people available. And then we would have plus 10 to our overall storage. We have a chef's kitchen, which is nice. Allows us to cook some good food, hold feasts and so on. Which will actually improve morale. Originally, like a normal difficulty, it's like a plus 15. Or oh, I should remember, I actually have medicines on my back. I cannot get other backpacks of materials of any kind unless I dump this here. So let us get three meds. Now we can also have a look at our base and the resources here to see what we are consuming every day. We have a day and night cycle and every day we consume free food because we have free survivors. If we had four survivors, we would consume four food every day. We don't consume any meds right now. We don't consume ammo, materials, fuel, parts. That's actually the word that I was looking for. We have influence and we also have prestige, uh, which we can spend on a prestige trader for very good and strong items prestige is very rare and hard to get there is a specific game mode you can play to earn more which is kind of like a survival mode air. that um, yeah is quite difficult it's not easy and 
is basically meant to kill you until you can survive for as long as possible to get even more points. Right, let me just uh, silently kill these zombies. We'll be doing quite a bit of this in the early game because I need to be safe. I actually need to go the other way. <laughs> That is my bad. All right, so we enabled a queen size bed. We have well appointed. So I think our, yeah, well appointed. We have plus three morale for everyone. So now we're at the minus seven. So we still need to improve this. We will get rid of the trash here. And then we might start investing in a little farm once we have the materials to do so, because we, yeah, we do have free materials, but we definitely need more. We need a bunch. Now, over time, we can actually move to different outposts or homesteads. Uh, doing that will basically refund all of our investments here. And when we have refunded these investments, we can basically build a little bit quicker. But usually these bigger bases come with more slots and we need more materials to build outposts and other things like that. All right, let me just have a quick little look here. So we have an optional thing to check out the billboard. We will do that anyway. Huh. Okay. We'll find a Molotov right away. The survey point is over here. So we can actually ignore that because this is very close. But we will want to do the survey point anyway because it tells us what all of the other buildings around us are. So yeah, we'll search through all of this stuff over here. This backpack is not as good as all of the other backpacks my characters have, I think, but we'll take it. Because why not? We're pretty close. And one of these uh, containers actually will have the materials we need. We have some cases of chemicals used for crafting or upgrading facilities. This is quite good. I'm very happy with that because, yeah, like I said, it's a requirement for upgrading certain things, like, for example, a medical bay. Progress report. Right. So far, so good. Cool. We'll do a quick run back. I'll drop done. this off, and then uh, I'll be right back. Cool. All right, so I just dropped off some materials. We're now up to eight. Let's have a look if we can actually build something good, because I do think that is actually uh, a requirement. Build a new facility to improve your base, yes. So the only thing we're act actively consuming right now is food. Uh, let me actually check because we have two spaces here, which overlooks this area. Actually, we might want to conserve one of these for a guard tower, which means the one in the back should be the one for food. And we can build a bunch of different things. We can build a workshop, which lets us salvage weapons for parts, produce ammo for our resource stockpile, and make our own crossbow bolts. We could make more outdoor beds, but we don't really need them. We could build an infirmary, which we also don't really need right now. We could build a still, which provides water access to our base, which we currently also don't have. Uh, we could build a garden, which produces food. A fighting gym, a shooting range, a latrine, which gives us a bonus to morale. A watchtower, which will basically allow people to shoot at zombies outside of the base and keep the area safe. A rain collector, which provides us with morale and drinking water. We could build a generator, which provides base-wide power. Some needle projects, which we don't have access right now, and daybreak facilities, which we also don't have access to right now. So we will start with a garden. Like I said, that is the only thing that we are currently consuming is food. So having a garden offsets that by a little bit. We'll go ahead. All right, we have a group nearby who wants our help. They are close to a blood heart, blood plague heart, or a plague heart, I should say. Um, we are definitely going to want to make some friends here. When we help people out, these groups, which are randomly appointed, by the way, they become our allies, which means they will help us in combat. They could actually provide bonuses as well. So they might be mechanics and they might help keep our, sh our cars in shape because the amount of cars on this map is actually limited 
and if one gets destroyed it's gone forever and we have fewer cars to use so that could be very useful we can also just trade with them uh, in return for influence which we build up over time and yeah you know they might have something that we actually need so is something to consider now we do have a car over here as well currently i don't own a firearm so i definitely want to find one of those as soon as possible but first let us uh, search this billboard we have one container over here then we can climb up on top and from the top of that we can start scouting out the buildings around us to see what they provide now, this one actually provides us some parts we leveled up in wits by finding that which is nice because when we have the full amount of stars, we can unlock a specialization, which makes our character stronger. We can actually pick two different things to make it stronger in two different directions. We have a screamer over there, a camping trailer. And we're all done here. A campground restroom. We don't have a lot of buildings around here, actually. Just need to find a question mark. I might be super blind, there is one, and that is about it. So we have an unfinished house. Uh, we can also make outposts. When we look at our base here, we can actually have two outposts right now. And the outposts kind of work in addition to what we have here built in our own base. They could provide money, um, fuel, food, ammo, and so on over time. So for example, the unfinished house here, if we make this an outpost, which will cause some influence, we actually get materials collection. So we will get some materials every day. And we could use that to offset the cost of certain facilities that we can build in our own base. So it's actually quite nice, quite strong. Now we also have a car over here and I'm curious if it has any fuel because if it does, we're driving this thing back over to base. No, it is empty. All right. Let us check out this campground restroom, actually. Because who knows what we can find inside of it. We didn't start here, did we? Or maybe, yeah, I th actually we did start over here. So let us scout out this house instead. We'll scout this out, we'll get some materials, we'll go back to base and then that will be the end of the episode because I want to keep I will I will do my best to keep these episodes to like 30 minutes long maximum. I might not always succeed, but that is the goal. So we just started up our uh, our campaign here. We did our initial our initial few missions. Now, we don't have to do all of these uh, objectives like a cure for all seasons. It's an optional randomly generated mission. We can ignore it. We'll grab boxes of seeds, that is great. The jugs of ethanol, also great. It's used for upgrading facilities. So are the boxes of seeds. We can use those to upgrade the garden that we have. So that in and of itself is very potent because like I said, you know, we need to generate food. We'll grab whatever we can grab, of course. But when we look at our base right now, we get plus one food from the base and as a result, we lose minus two food a day so we will be good for the next three days and every a day on average lasts about an hour hour and a half something like that so we have about three hours of play before we run out of food that's actually pretty decent now we can do a fast search here you might have noticed that as i went along when you do that however you run the risk, and it's quite a high risk, of making noise. When you make noise, it attracts zombies and you're in for a fight. Now right here, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. But it could be, especially if you're already a little bit low on health. Uh, it could be quite dangerous for you to do this. Um, I think I have nothing left to search here. Which is weird, but this thing turned black. I thought I had one more left to go. Uh, we could claim this as an outpost, but it would just give us two beds. It's not that potent. It's not that 
uh, importance. Ooh, we do have this fuel tank that we can search over here. So we'll grab... Yeah, that we made some noise. Alright, found some cooking oil. And there we have our first zombie. Now something that is really nice, when I press C, you kind of dodge. And you can use that to dodge behind zombies. And when you're behind them, you can actually melee kill them. It takes uh, quite a bit of stamina. And so does actually killing them from behind. It does cost stamina. But it does reduce the risk of them hitting you and injuring you. So definitely worthwhile. And a good strategy. All right, so we have a fruit stand and we could find some more materials over in this unfinished house. But we're going to bring this back to the base and then uh, we'll put a cut to the end of the video. Or put a cut to this video and end it. <laughs> English is not my first language and actually I'm a little bit distracted by things. So sometimes I'm not entirely aware of the things that I'm saying. Oh, I'm doing my best to keep up. Anyway, I'm running back over to base, turning this in. And then that will be the end of this video. So for now, thank you so much for watching. Please do leave a like and a comment below if you enjoyed this content and wish to see more. And I will see you guys for whatever video I do next. All right. We're so close. Let me just drop this off. There we go. All right. See you for the next one.